God be the glory and praise. I would like to share to each and every one uh, the dream that I had January the 8th. Uh, in this dream, I was with my husband in this uh, room. Actually, it's like a living room. And then suddenly, I saw this uh, Asian, Asian lady that stood in front of my husband. My husband was seated on a couch. And then she stand up in front of my husband like teasing him. And then she was wearing a mini skirt, really, really short skirt, just like a cheerleader kind. And then uh, all of a sudden, she just bent down on the ground with her buttocks up facing my husband. And I noticed she's not wearing even underwear. And then uh, my husband knew that I was there. So he turned around, you know, he don't want to look at it. And so what I did was I was so pissed. And you know what? In this dream, it's like I didn't even, you, you, you know, when you're dreaming, you're not thinking that um, it's a dream. You know that you're there. And so I was so mad with what she did. I came close to her and pinched her, pinched her as hard as I can. I was so mad. Why would you do that in front of me, you know, to, to my husband? So I pinched her so hard. And then at first she was like giggling, thinking that, you know, probably it was my husband pinching her. But then she found out that it was, you know, a painful pinch. She started screaming and she saw that it was me. She started screaming and ran away. And then it's like she went into the school. School and then I found out, you know, you can read it in, the, in your mind that she's going to go study more. Uh, to make it better next time something like that and uh, I rebuke that because I don't want her to be better and I don't want her to to you know to seduce uh, my husband and I'm sure this is not only for my husband but this is a reminder to all the husband and wives out there and so um, brothers and sisters uh, you know what is this all about uh, why is this lady tried to tempt my husband? And I'm sure some of you who are watching me right now, you had several experiences of girls tempting your husband to commit sin and, uh, and so on and so forth. And I had experienced that for so long, you know, even going to the store with my husband, we were at Walmart and then I just I'm just on the other aisle. He was on the other aisle. And I saw girls following him. And I even saw one. She was just walking and pushing her cart properly. And then when she passed by my husband, she actually like shake, you know, walk like uh, like in a catwalk. And then, uh, and then after passing by my husband, she's like walking sexy. And then she turned around and look if my husband's watching. I was standing beside my husband and looking at her. And then when she looked and see me watching, she was ashamed. And then she went pushing her cart away from us and she walks naturally. And see, that's, uh, you know, this is just, um, this is just a reminder to all the wives out there and to all the husbands. So why this lady tried to tempt my husband and even you guys there? Go to Proverbs 7 verse 10. The Lord said, and behold, a woman comes to meet him. Dress as a harlot and cunning of heart. You know, did you see that? It's, it's in the Bible. There's a lot of girls right now and not, you know, there's even Christians out there who are doing the same thing. They will go out, you know, the devil or Satan uses techniques to make people sin. And what are these techniques or schemes that they're uh, doing? Because just like in Proverbs, it says here, dress as a harlot and cunning of heart. What do you mean by cunning? It's devious and skillful. So they have their technique and schemes in order to make people sin. And always remember, brothers and sisters, that when you look at the girls lustfully, you are sinning. And this is just a reminder of God to each and every one of us. So if you are a Christian, be careful on how you dress. And if you are with your husband, you know, husbands, when you see ladies who are very, uh, 
revealing, wearing revealing clothes. You know, if you see them from far, keep your eyes away. Don't stare because it's the devil telling you stare and then later your mind will be working on different things. And you don't want that to happen. And then some ladies, they intentionally hint and show, you know, show temptations to guys. And, um, and I know, brothers and sisters, some of you, you know, had experienced this. Not only the guys. I'm sure there are women out there who are tempted by guys too. There will be guys who will come and approach you and uh, say things, say things to you or tempt you or whatever. Vice versa, it's happening. That's how the devil is trying to make you sin. They put something in there, device, skillful device to tempt you. And they offer themselves, you know, they offer themselves to you. And sometimes they want to come close to you, you know, just hit you. Oh, I'm sorry. Or, you know, making eye contact, making, making facial expression, whatever. All you have to do is when you encounter this kind of people, just turn your eyes away. And then, uh, or even say, you know, uh, God bless you. In order for them to be reminded that you belong to God and that we are reminding them, don't tempt me and may God bless you to stop what you're doing. And so, brothers and sisters, I know now, nowadays, it's getting so rampant there. And um, they're tempting the husbands, they're tempting the wives. Especially if the wives are alone, their husbands are far, working far, and if the wife is working and the husband is in the house, they're really looking for reason. And when you're at the store, everywhere, temptation is everywhere. We have to put this in our mind that these people, when you look at them, they're pretty or they're good looking. If they're trying to tempt you, they are not them. Try to think that's the devil in them trying to tempt you to bring you to the pits of hell. You don't want to have you don't want that to happen to you. So this is where the Lord led me, a warning against adultery. Go to Proverbs 6, verse 20 to 35. The Lord said, My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp. This teaching is a light and correction and instructions are the way to life. Keeping you from your neighbor's wife. From the smooth talk of a wayward woman. Do not last in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. For a prostitute can be had for a loaf of bread, but another man's wife preys on your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his life without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals with, without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleep with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold. Though it cost him all the wealth of his house, but a man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are blows and disgrace are his lot, and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He will refuse a bribe, however great it is. This is the word of the Lord. 
So brothers and sisters, don't don't step into the fire because once you're there, you will be burned. And you don't want to destroy your marriage. You don't want, number one, is to go into hell by committing adultery. We don't know the day or the hour. Anytime, if there will be an explosion, atomic bomb or anything, and you die on that, it's too late. And so we need to spend time. This is just a reminder, not only to you, but also to me, because I've been busy with my work. And honestly, my husband's always telling me, honey, you're spending less time with me. And that's why he said, I wish you're not going to work anymore. May the Lord provide us everything that everything will be paid for. And all you have to do is just serve the Lord. We can help the homeless. We can uh, do the things that, um, you know, the Lord wants us to do. The, his name will be glorified. And then we can be together always. And so I know the Lord has an answer for that. And so this is just a reminder to each and every one of us. The Lord said, you know, we need to spend time together as a couple. So what did the Lord said concerning married life because you know brothers and sisters i know a lot of wives right now are busy and even husbands when you're busy at work and when you're done go home spend your time with your family and i'm telling this not only to you i'm reminding myself because when i go home after work i'm still working in the house and then um you know and we need to spend time to each other because if you ignore your husband or you ignore your wife, you don't want them to be tempted to be with somebody else. And the Lord reminded, reminded us in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Now for the mother, matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourself to prayers. prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. See, praise be to God. It's a reminder that we need to spend time together as couple because if you don't, you know, uh, humans, they have, they have urges. And then you don't want them to be tempted by somebody else because the, has, the wife, after work, she goes with her friend, go party, and then they don't see each other. And so the husband needs a company and spend time somewhere else. Same with the wife. If the wife is not working and it's in the house or working and go home and then don't see the husband because after work the husband is partying watching football with the other uh, husbands and work the whole time spend time spend time even with the busy schedule make sure that you spend time with each other so no one will be tempted and that is written in first corinthians 7 verse 1 that's not coming from me it's coming from the word of god in the bible so remember the words of god in Matthew 18, verse 9, And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. This message is the same in Matthew 5, verse 29 and Mark 9, verse 47. Our eyes... Be careful of what we're watching. When you see guys, I don't think so much with the girls, you know, lustfully thinking about guys. But most of the guys, when they see uh, ladies, 
who are wearing seductive clothes, you know, they're tempted. And it's not only the, 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 the people who are living in darkness. Some of the Christians who are claiming Christians, they're doing the same thing. They go to church and wearing sexy clothes. You are like prostituting yourself. You are like sent by, you know, <laughs> you're like prostituting yourself. You're bringing yourself there in the church and then tempting the other guys who are supposed to go there to praise God. But they're looking at you because they're seeing your body shape. They're re you're revealing clothes, whatever. We need to dress decently. In order for us not to tempt the guys. And we don't want them to stumble and fall because of us. We want to wear decently in the name of Jesus. So therefore, brothers and sisters, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 22, the Lord said, Reject every kind of evil. Always remember the pretty girls that are seducing you if you're married. Always think. The devil is trying to use them to tempt you. And you don't want to be tempted. Always put it in your mind. I belong to Jesus. I am the son of God. Or I'm the daughter of God. And I don't want to stumble and fall. I don't want to sin. And so when you look and you see it's pretty or sexy, close your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me and turn your eyes away. So pray the Lord's Prayer. Pray the Lord's Prayer. I always pray the Lord's Prayer. Why? Jesus, you know, Jesus teach this to the apostles. And it's it contains a lot of stuff. It's complete. You know, in Matthew 6, 9 verse 13, the Lord said, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from evil. See? That the Lord will lead us from so we will not be tempted. Praise be to God. And so brothers and sisters, this is a great reminder for each and every one of us. If you're ladies, be careful of what you're wearing. And uh, if you're guys, do the same thing. And please don't, don't make jokes to tempt anyone. You don't want them to sin. And uh, be careful, husbands and wives. And uh, please pray together as couple. Always make it as a habit in order for the Lord to keep your marriage strong and tight because you are on top of your foundation who is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Rock, our Redeemer. So God bless each and every one of us in Jesus Yeshua's name. Amen and amen.